what a long few days myself and Barney have had. We've been in the south of France, we've been visiting Lolo from the French team. He had a big beach party near his house in Perpignan. It was, uh, yeah, it was really fun. Um, a lot of driving on the way down to get there. We stopped off fishing on the way as well, so he didn't catch anything. Uh, pipe was yesterday, feeling very hungover today. But now we've got four days, I think, yeah, four, four nights in France to go fishing. And that's what we're going to do. But today has been lots of driving, like I said, feeling very hungover and sorry for ourselves. We've gone to about five or six lakes and um, we finally found one that we that we, that we like, there we go, what's that sun saying? That's not the bear. We finally found one that we like. Uh, you can see my partner in crime behind me there. That's Barney. Some of you probably remember him from uh, from when he used to work at Nash. He doesn't work with us anymore, but um, but we're still good friends. And he came along with me on this trip, and now he's going to fish with me. Like I said, it's been a long day trying to find somewhere to go. We finally have found somewhere, a very busy park lake, but there is an 80 pounder in here. So, got to give it a go, ain't you? I think we're going to fish here for two or three nights before going onto a canal for a night. Um, yeah, enough rambling, let's get to it. We really knew very little about this lake, nestled deep in the south of France. All we did know was it had one very big common in there, around the 80 pound mark. And to be honest, that's all we needed to know to get excited. We settled on a swim on the end of the wind that gave us a good amount of water to spread our rods out in. With the swim decided, it was now a case of deciding where each of us were going to fish. What side do you want in this swim? I kind of want the right hand side to be honest. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you have the right hand side if I can fish that bar. The bar? Yeah. What, the, where, where does the bar actually go? I think the bar's pretty much in the now. middle. Oh, I quite like to put a rod on the bar as well. It's massive, isn't it? Like, we can definitely get... <laughs> it's like the length of the lake. <laughs> yeah, but it's the length of the lake this way, not that way. Isn't it? So I don't really know how you're going to do that. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> the bar, the, oh, the single biggest feature of the lake. So then we have to fucking... Oh. Fight. <laughs> we'll have to fight for we'll it. We'll have to fight, won't we? We'll have to fight for it. <laughs> we all know how that'll end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we've come up with a, a, a fair, compromise. fair compromise. Yeah. We're going to rotate the bar. Yeah. And you can have the right hand side. And I'll have the left hand side of the first guy on the bar. Yeah, sure. Happy? Are you can put it right on top of the bar. Right on top. Right on top, baby. Yeah. Got cherry on the cake. For an 80 pound park lake cup, like I'm in snaffle up. Yeah, cool. Right, shall we go walk 500 meters back to the van and unpack it? Let's do it. <laughs> I'm too hungover for this. <laughs> right, we've got the long job now. We're getting all this stuff in there. Over. There. Uh, not quite 500 metres. I exaggerated. Go rods first. I'm not sure I can be bothered in this heat with the bed chairs yet. Nah, we'll do them later. Grab them later. Right. You reckon do them now? Nah, do them later. No. Rods, boat, bait, catch a carp. Let's do it. Energy levels are extremely low right now. Energy levels are very low. Um, yeah, I think that the late night and all the beer last night probably plays a bit of a role in that, but we'll keep going with soldiers. The heat, the hangover, and all the gear having to be handled some distance from the van really wasn't the ideal start to the session, but it had to be done, so we cracked on with it and started fishing. I went out in the boat to find spots and was surprised at the depths I found, dropping down to 30 foot in places. However, deep waters this late into summer in the hot European countries like Spain, Italy and France are where you want to be fishing. A little fact here, carp best synthesise protein at 27 degrees, meaning that if the water temperature exceeds this, they no longer seek the shallows when it's sunny and instead head to the cooler, deeper water. Anyway, I soon found some spots in the deep open water, along snag line margins and on the bar that we were going to rotate. I gave each spot a good helping of bait, a mixture of particle tigers and scopex good boilies before plugging the spots into my bait boat. This would allow me to easily go back out to the spots at night without having to go out in the inflatable boat. Whilst I tied up rigs, classic slip one presentations as always with tiger hook baits to try and deter the craze and catfish that seemed ever present in the south of France, Barney did the same and went out in the boat to find his spots. We then loaded the bait boats and got rigs into position. We were both exhausted and we were happy to have all the rods out fishing just as it got dark. 
However, it didn't take long for us to get the first buy. <laughs> That's it, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's it, god. Damn, it? That's gonna be. That was one of the longest fights I've ever had. Morning. What a busy night. Me and Bon and Belly slept again. We've uh, we've got through a few species: uh, catfish, bream, tench. There's these little fish that look like a cross between a carp and a bream as well that we've caught. They're quite common in in Europe. We had a couple of them, and also we had a carp. So the uh, the the spot on the on the bar that we were both fighting over last night. Uh, it's my go to go on there first because Barn got the, the right hand side of the swim that he wanted and thankfully I had one, yeah, 20 kilo, 44 pounds, so so happy, absolutely beasted me. I can't remember the last time I got beasted that much by a fish so yeah, I was glad to get it in the net and yeah, we've got one off the mark. One last look at her. What a sick car. To be fair, I think that's the, uh, the trip made for me now. I wasn't really expecting to catch many big carp on this trip. I said the priority was the party. Just a bit of fishing thrown in, so to catch a carp like this, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Right, let's get her back. With the fish slipped back, we had some breakfast and chilled out in the shade. Barney had a bite a few hours later from a really small common before one of my deeper water rods was away. There we go, another one. Basically a mini version of the one we had this morning. Uh, just as the sun was starting to set a little bit. Felt good for a bite. Yeah, absolute screamer of a take. We've got another really cool, dark, uh, common from this particular lake. Yeah, really nice place. Apparently it's quite low stock here. I've been speaking to the person who put us on the venue. So to have 
three carp already in less than 24 hours of being here, having rods out, I think we're doing all right. And there's still that 80 pounds to go for, so plenty more to potentially catch. But for the time being, I admire this one. We do the rods, have some dinner. Yeah, a lovely evening in France. The fish was slipped back and we redid the rods for the evening. We decided that we were going to give it just one more night as we had such a long drive home over the next couple of days and wanted to fish canal system before we got back to England. The rods went out perfectly and we settled down to have some dinner. The sun began to set and the coolness that came with it was much appreciated after the hot day. We had a few glasses of wine and went to sleep. As the sun rose the next morning, I was awoken to a bite. Morning guys, welcome to our final morning at this particular lake and as you can see, I'm playing one, but I've got a suspicious feeling it's going to be a catfish, unfortunately. However, it's not all bad news because Barn had one in the night uh, and it was a carp. So we've at least got one carp to show you. And you never know, this could turn out to be a, uh, could turn out to be a carp, but when they fight like this, this erratically big head shakes, big odd runs, normally it's a catfish, but you never know. At least Barn got one. There is a way to, uh, to safely handle these without putting them in the net. First you need to make sure that they're sort of completely out of energy before you grab their mouths. So they don't, they don't twist and potentially break any fingers. And then to do this, I'll grab the leader, bring them in. Make sure the lines are twisted and you sort of just hit their faces slightly. And you can see he's not swimming off. Normally this means they're pretty much done. In terms of the fight, I think this one is. So then you just gotta grab their bottom lip and grab it quite firmly. There you go, he's not quite done yet. You grab it quite firmly like this. You can see that their teeth, they do have teeth, but they're like sandpaper. So it's not like they're gonna slice you or anything. You might get a little, a little cut. And then he's all unhooked and ready to go back. What a beautiful sight, eh, Barn? Mmm, lovely. Right, I'd say he's about 40 pound, 50 pound maybe. Let's get him back. Thanks, mate. Much appreciated. They look massive, didn't they, when they go back like that? <laughs> yeah. Right. Should we get your fish out? Let's do it. Let's do it. Some water. Yeah. A little, a little small. It's definitely a river cut. Nice work, Barn. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Get, got a decent one, which is nice. I reckon, yeah, mid 20. Yeah. They're definitely from the river. They've yeah, got that long one. Yeah, long shape, and they've got the really cool mouths. Yeah, really cool carp. We, mm. we did it! Yeah, finally. Sweet, well done, man. Just reeling in the last of the rods, that dreaded van. Unload, load. God, I do it so often now, it's uh, yeah, it's the most tedious part of fishing, but that's all pretty much done. Ready to go on the road, six hours to the next spot. We're going further north towards Calais to a canal spot. I've never been before, someone's put me on it. So this is a, it's, uh, it's not a long stretch, but there's quite a few decent fish in there. So it's perfect for a little stop off on the way home. Um, if we nick one more, then we've done really well, but I'm glad that, glad that Barnes caught. I've had a couple, uh, we've had one nice one. So for a little, um, stop off road trip on the way back from a party in the south of France. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think we're doing all right. I've got to say though, the weather is not helping. I, I always try and avoid coming over to Europe at this time of year just because it's just so hot and I don't think the fish are, are that interested in feeling because of the heat. I don't normally come back till the start of September. Um, and some of, the, some of the times, the days with how hot they've been, it's reminded me exactly why, but uh, it is what it is. We still managed to catch a few. Right, let's go. We got on the road and headed north. It was a long drive, doing almost the entire length of France, and it took most of the day to get to our canal overnight spot. Okay, we have made it to the canal. Long old drive, but wasn't too bad. 
uh, pretty straightforward, as is most of driving on the French motorways. But we got to the canal, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's um, loads of sort of sh ugh, loads of short stretches, quite close together in a small area. So I'm going to walk up and down them, see if we can find anything. I do know that there's a decent stock of fish in them. Um, we should be able to find a couple, I'm sure. And then we're just going to drop on and do the night. I do love canal fishing, especially in France. It's uh, it's really cool. The the stock of fish is it's quite surprising. You look at these muddy little venues, and sometimes you think there's going to be nothing in here. But a lot of the time, there are fish in there, and there are some big fish. Hopefully, that's the case here. And we'll have a little walk around, see if we can see anything, and then just plot up somewhere for the night before heading back to England. I've just seen a carp right up against the wall there, almost in the flow. That's crazy. That's mad. It's like on the side, chewing up against it. Bard's been seeing one as well. Seen one. Did you see one, Bard? Yeah. Good one. I saw one in here. I saw one along this, this current, Man. like flanking up against it, like eating off the side of it. But proper in the flow. That's mad. Have you seen one? Yeah, just over here and the. Uh, well, let's go investigate. I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a carp there. Try not spook him. Probably about 20 pounder. Yeah, there you go. Just all the way on. There. Nice, few fish in this stretch. A big old mirror, fucking hell. You can see the just seen this coloured water here. Fuck me, that was a big carp. That was a 40 pounder all day long. Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm really excited now. We saw a few fish. Um, we got one more little stretch we want to check out, but there's a canal stretch where we saw the most fish. Saw that big mirror, really, but the 40 pound all day long. And um, I think we're going to go fish there. Mid around the canal, bars to fish the bottom half. I want to fish the top half where I saw the, uh, the big mirror. Have a little base camp here, spread some rods, have some food. Catch a big carp. Come on, Barney. Let me get this rod out. Have some food. Catch a 40 pound canal mirror. Come on. That bankside dining, isn't it, Barn? Not bad, is it? It's all right. Rods are out. A selection of French goodness. How to live. And some wine. Beautiful wine. Come on, the carp. That's all we need now, isn't it? Right, we've had a bite. It's not the big mirror. It's a common of about three pounds. <laughs> that was exciting though, wasn't it, Barn? That was exciting. We thought, <laughs> we thought it could it be. Was all, it was all happening. Just had dinner. Sat in the sunset. Not bad. And this is a beautiful fish as well, isn't it? Uh, They're all beautiful. They're all beautiful, but not as beautiful as a 40 pound mirror. <sighs> Can't win them all. No. We're doing catch picks then. <laughs> uh, we can swerve catch picks on this one, I think. <laughs> right, let's get them out. You ready for Massive. Little canal scamp. Right, I'll hold the camera there. <laughs> and then shoot on 24. Yeah, There we go. Out and let me hold, hold it out. <laughs> That we talking. That's a big, yeah? That's a bigger than that. <laughs> right, sweet. <laughs> cool little one, but not what we're after. But very welcome. Slipping back. I'm 
morning and um, we've caught some carp. I actually finished on four. All of them were about the same size of as the one that um, you saw yesterday evening. So I've not caught anything worth keeping or worth showing yet. But Barney, Barn has. Uh, he's caught a decent one, he said. He's kept, he sacked it. So we're going to get out now for a picture. And then I think we're going to head back. We, we might go check out the other canal, but to be honest, it's getting kind of late now. And um, yeah, I think it's time. time to go back to England. So let's see Barney's fish before signing off. I'm still here. I'm still attached to the fucking thing. I've got to. Let me do that. There we go. The fruits of last night. It's been a very, very, very fun trip with you, mate. Yeah, it has. Um, not been loads of carp, but I think we've done pretty well, all things considered. And. Yeah, nice to end on this one. There's not, doesn't seem like there's that many big fish in this stretch. There's lots of little ones. I think you were up last night, weren't you? Mm. Catching lots of small ones. So it was nice to get this one. And we'll be back for the big mirror. Yeah, that big mirror has eluded us on this occasion, yeah. but you know it's here. Right. Anyway, let's, let's get this one back. Good stuff. He's not very happy. No. Good stuff, mate. Well yeah. done. Sam. Epic release. Where's he gone? To Calais.